Hey everybody, welcome back to New Venus channel and today it is time to look into callback flush timing of UGS watchers. Here we go. Watchers in VGS are common when it comes to side effects. Even though you should not overuse them and use computer properties where possible, it is very common if you have an actual side effect and not just derived state, so saying, I don't know, all to do's that are done or the length of a word. Well, for these cases, you shouldn't use watchers, but if you say, in 50% of the chance when doing something, I want to set a text, that might be a good use case. Or a lot of areas where you actually want to say, hey, a certain other part should update when something happens, like doing an async call. Perfect. So you know a lot about watchers or also watch effect already, but you might not have heard about callback flush timing before. So yes, we can pass a lot of options to watchers and also to watch effect. And one is the callback flush timing. So we can decide if it should be pre, post or sync. What does it actually mean? What's the difference? Well, we have a demo application prepared to look into that, so let's get going. Our demo application is based on the Vue.js playground, so as minimal as possible, one could say, and we just have a count. Very simple and clean. So what we're gonna do now is we want to watch and say, okay, let's take the count here, and we say, whenever this changes, we want to log that. But not only log that here in the console, let's actually add some logs. So let's say, okay, we have a ref that's basically holding an area of strings and we have the logs and then we can say logs.value.push well count increased wonderful so let's also move this down here to say okay we want to see when the button is pushed button pushed and here we go great now let's log out these logs in here in a very simple div and then just have uh, maybe some I don't know, p tags and say for each uh, of the elements. We can also do like a ul and an li that's more semantic, right? Log and logs. And what we want to do is obviously logging them out. So just showing them. Great. So far, so good. Let's fix the list here and we're good to go. And now if we hit it, we see button pushed, count increased. We see the count boring so far. Now we didn't really learn anything about the callback flush timing so far, right? That's because we didn't use it yet. Let's see what we can do here. The first thing I'm going to do here is actually creating a watch function. So let's just say const watch function is something we'll pass in here. This is then a higher order function. And then we, well, we have basically that part. So let's replace this here. And in here, I want to give, give the type in just to make logging a bit easier. Then we want to use the watch function here. We might have to define that beforehand. That makes a lot of sense. We could also not make an arrow function. It would work as well. Anyway, okay, we have this and we now set up um, another watcher that also watches count. And in here we set flush to one of the three options, post, pre, or sync. So pre is the default and we will use post here and we'll see what happens. So now interestingly, we have the type. So we could say watcher of type and then plus type, plus colon count increased. And here we see, okay, that didn't work out well because of course we have to pass in the type here. So let's give this a pre and let's give this a post to actually return that function from the higher order function. And here we see watcher of type pre count increased. Wonderful. Now that didn't seem too hard and right now nothing happens. And that's on purpose because pre and post are not that different when it comes to watching simple values. Now, here's the difference though. If we would now say, let's access the DOM itself, right? For example, we could say, hey, let's get the length of the list or maybe just get the count value. This is also why the count ref is here. Let's just do this and put it in. So let's say, okay, count increased two and let's just get count ref dot value dot inner text. So far, so good. So we basically say whenever something changes, the watcher should say watcher of type, type count increase to in the actual value. And if you click, we see, okay, the button was pushed. That's great. Watcher of type pre count increase to zero. Watcher, wait, what? Zero? But it's one. Posts count increase to count one. Yeah, that works. So is Vue.js broken or did we something wrong? No, 
No worries, this is exactly how these callback flush timings should work. Because the pre-mode, which is the default, will basically execute the watcher after the parent has been changed, but before the DOM of the owner of the watcher has changed. So this is why we get the previous result back, which is zero, in our logs. Makes sense so far, right? And post, well, post is, as the name says, executed after the DOM changes. So here we can clearly see no problem, all right, we get the new value. So this is particularly interesting if you actually need to do something with the DOM that changes, especially the ones that has reactive bindings, like being created in a v4 list, or as we also seen here, just having a ref or a reactive being put out in a template. And if this reactivity is based on, for example, animation you wanna do or certain other operations, well, then it would be good to use flush post here. And now you wonder why, wait, there is a third mode, sync. What is this about actually? Well, let's have a look. So the third mode, sync, is a bit special because that means the watcher will be triggered straight away. That means no batching or also triggering all the time. So if we would just say, okay, let's watch the counts, have the watch function and put in a sync in here. There we go. And do a flush sync then we will see the following. We click and yeah, makes a lot of sense. Sync runs first before any kind of batching. So before pre or post or similar is done. Even if we move the whole thing around, for example, up here, run the same thing again, sync will run first. Because as soon as this watcher is being triggered, it will be executed. There is no waiting period. And now you might wonder, okay, there is a great use case for pre, the default, for post animations with everything ready to DOM, What's with sync? Well, the typical use case of template rendering is not that interesting, but sometimes there are cases. For example, in learn.dux.com. In there, there's a panel preview where there's an iframe which should always be refreshed as soon as the state is ready or polling. So you want to see the information as soon as possible. There, sync also helps. So you don't have to wait for batching operations and see the update straight away. But that's not the only use case. There's also another one, which is more interesting when we come to syncing refs. So if you'd write our own sync refs composable, and you might know sync refs already from last week's video where we talked about view use composables, well, then you know it was already coming. But let's write a very, very naive version ourselves. So let's say we have a function called sync ref or sync refs, it doesn't matter too much. We take ref one and ref two, and all we have to do is say, let's watch the ref one. And if there is a new value, then let's just say r2.value is the new value. Not nicely typed, I know exactly, but that's more or less it. And now we could say, okay, const ref1 is a ref with the value one, const ref2 is with the value two, and now we call sync ref, ref1, ref2. And we don't call a value or anything, obviously, because these are both refs as we pass them in here. I could even say this is ref t. Oh, let's, let's spare the typing as we said before, but you get the gist behind it. Let's see what's happening though. So if we now say we log ref1.value and just say, okay, ref1, we don't put it out in the template mainly because that will mess around with the ticks as well. We have a look in the console. And now we see ref1 is one. Okay, that makes sense. Let's log console.log ref2 right, the value as well, here we are, ref2, and it's two. So far so good, because nothing changed. We didn't set our watcher to execute immediately, so nothing will happen until we change things. If you now set ref1.value to undefined, or whatsoever, and then say, okay, we log the whole thing again, let's just take this batch and log it, what will we see? Ref1 is undefined, but ref2 is still two. Did we not write that correctly? Or even if we set it to three, right? Same idea, ref1 is three, ref2 is two. How's that possible? Let's just emit both ref1, ref2. Ref1, ref2. Hey, they are three, so, so we didn't really break it. Well, here's also where the sync part comes in pretty handy because it is very important what the value of these refs are actually when we use them further. 
So the default is pre. So basically after the component, the parent component self updated before the DOM will be updated and things will be batched. What we want though, if we want to sync refs is also to straight away apply the new value. So you know what to do. Let's go into our function here and change the flush over to sync. That's by the way, also the default of the view is composable. And here now we see ref one is three and ref two is three. This is exactly what we expect, but there is a little caveat to that because sync always means right now. And as we said before, there is no batching and will always trigger. It can cause some performance issues if not used wisely. So if you like, I don't know, trigger on bigger data objects whatsoever. That's by the way also what the Vue.js docs say about it. They say, quote, use of caution, sync watchers do not have batching and triggers every time reactive mutation is detected. It's okay to use them to watch simple Boolean values, but avoid using them on data sources that might be synchronously mutated many times, for example, arrays. Yeah, sure. If you have something like, oh, I have an array and I push an element, it will trigger all the time when pushing a single element, no matter uh, what, even though you could batch them nicely if you'd use pre or post as well. So that's the only thing to be careful about. But of course, if you want to have sync refs, it makes a lot of sense to say, okay, take the one thing and the other thing, they need to have the same value so we can use them further in our script part the correct way. And these are the three callback flush timing options, pre the default sync, well, for immediate changes and post if there's anything related to animation and the DOM itself that you want to do. And now I'm curious, did you ever change the callback flush timing before? If yes, for what, please drop it in the comments. Maybe you have some interesting use cases that I didn't occur before. And um, of course, check out the latest Deja Vu episode. It will be amazing. So stay tuned, check out the older videos, or if that's not the last one, you know, keep watching. See you soon, folks, and happy hacking.